It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. I'm Jeff Grubb. I write for GameSpeed.com. I also do Grub Snacks here on GiantBob.com, uh, which is a fun show where we talk about fun things like video games. All right, and then there's there's the thing from last week. So again, I want to say thank you to everybody for keeping the secret. What happens on Grub Snacks, you know, stays on Grub Snacks and all that. Uh, be cool. Uh, it was very fun to see all that stuff kind of work out and everyone be cool. Um, but I I do want to like just get it out there and let people know because it's um it is something where it's like hey it's basically been confirmed now by other people like going and seeing seeing what I said and or hearing what I said and then uh, confirming them themselves. So let's just uh, let's stop the rumors and just say hey this is what happened. Uh, one versus one hundred is coming back and and you know this is not actually super new news. If you go back and look at what Phil Spencer has said, I think in an interview in 2020, he talked about bringing back a quiz show game, a live quiz show game that people could play together. And he was basically winking throughout the entire interview when he was talking about that. Um, well, the, you know, what this, what I'm confirming here is they are definitely making that game. And as I said last week, it's, it seems like it's coming from the alt space VR team. Uh, and they are they're spearheading the project and the all those uh, the avatars that we saw in the Microsoft Teams thing uh, that that they debuted a week ago or whatever, um, they're going to use that those avatars and they're going to bring that stuff in. And this is the kind of thing that this Alt Space VR team is working on. Um, so don't expect VR headsets. And I said this stuff a lot of this stuff last week. So if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, but I want to like make sure people get all the details. This is the kind of stuff that that Alt Space VR team is emphasizing and working on. They um, don't have free reign to go make a Microsoft VR headset or even like a full Microsoft VR metaverse or something like that. They're working on small projects uh, like incorporating a, a digital ch ch virtual chat room into Teams and then also making one versus 100 using the same technology. Um, now this is, you know, Alt Space VR separate from, from the Xbox team, but Xbox, the people in charge of Xbox, people like Phil Spencer, everyone there knows that one versus 100 is in the works fully behind it, fully supporting it. And they're very excited about it is, is my understanding. So uh, it, it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, with, with the support of Xbox, it's probably going to be a sure thing that it's going to you know bear fruit and we'll all get to get a chance to play this stuff i think it's um as good as you know for i guess you know people might not remember what one versus 100 was uh, there's maybe some younger viewers or something like that it was a live quiz game on xbox live where one person would get chosen and then a hundred other people would get chosen and then the one would play against the 100 the 100 in like a basically a quiz show format and then you could also be in the audience of like thousands and you were less involved but you still had a chance to like win something like little little trinkets or whatever for your character or whatever um but it was you know and it would be it would be played with like a live host and stuff like that and it was it was a real cool interactive thing it was really neat and people really loved it i did it like several times and really enjoyed myself and it seems like that format should all come back and also it the, it's the kind of thing that seems like is even more viable now because people are so much more connected and people uh people have you know they go out and spend money on more expensive headsets right and they like can talk in their headsets and um and people are just used to playing games together now more than ever. Uh, the biggest games in the world are still like Among Us and Fortnite. And uh, and that's really, even if you think about it, like five years ago, how much we've changed since then. Uh, uh, but compare that to now to when like one versus 100 was out, it is a completely different world. So it seems like the kind, this kind of thing could be more um, just viable based on who was playing than ever before. So it just makes sense. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Twin says in the chat, it's it was kind of ahead of its time, and I think that's right. And I think it's um, it, it's going to do very well when it comes back. So also, it's the kind of thing where, you know, it's Microsoft, right? And they have the cloud, and if they want to run it mostly on the cloud and enable you to play from your phone wherever you're at, and you're still signing into Xbox or your your Xbox account when you're doing that. But that that would really work, right? That could work very easily. You just open the Xbox app; it's live. You just jump in right there, and it's uh, yeah. It could just feel like a mobile experience first for those people if they want it to. Uh, from Red Warrior C sixty four, Forza Horizon five seems seems to have done incredibly well. Is Forza Horizon now actually the more important Forza series for Xbox Game Studios? Um. Yeah, I mean, yes, it is. Yeah, it's an open world 
racing driving game that's a playground that you can like you know made by playground but it's like you know an open world sandbox that you can play with friends and anyone could sort of come in and goof off and there's fun for like any sort of tier of player it's not just this one sort of track racing sim thing and and therefore it's going to appeal to a wider audience and it does yeah it's it's the more important one at this point yeah um i guess like how do you look at it forza motorsport 8 is going to be the foundation of the tech it's going to be the foundation of, of like what the game is going to look like going forward turn 10 is doing the work to make sure that forza motorsport 8 is going to be the probably the best looking game ever when it comes out um and also, you know, has other elements as well built into it so that it's it maybe even more varied than previous motorsport games. Um, and that work is crucial to making sure that Horizon succeeds. So, you know, if, if in terms of like development, I think motorsport's probably still more important. Turn 10 doing the foundational work is more important. But a, in terms of the, the game that you are presenting to the public, uh, yeah, I think Horizon is the kind of game that can have 4 million players in its first week or something like that. Like, yeah, that's... That's not motorsports probably not going to do that. Now I do think that this is um, indicative of the Microsoft strategy working. I, I feel like it's undeniable that this is the Microsoft strategy working where Forza Horizon a uh, five is very, it, 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 yeah, it's a, it's a well-received game, well-reviewed game. Um, but it's, it's also like a known quantity and it's the kind of thing where like, oh, okay, I, I, you know, I get it. It's another one of those. And yet it is still blowing up because people are really thirsty for games on their new xbox a lot of people have game pass a lot of people play a lot of games together on on xbox and if a game enables that and, and empowers that it's going to have that network effect that we talk about all the time and that's going to work and it's like, everything is just working in conjunction here and you could see that it's like if it can work for For forza horizon it's really going to work for halo as long as halo's good and then so on and so on as each of these games start coming out like they this, this game is like, you know, the biggest introduction for a big, biggest debut for an Xbox Game Studios game ever. I expect that to be broken immediately by Halo. And then probably every game after that would should be breaking that record. If it's if, there, if, if like if Halo comes out, and it's like the biggest games Xbox Game Studio launch ever. And then we don't hear, hear about another game breaking that record for a couple of years or, or at all. I, mean, that, I think to me, that sounds like a problem that every game should be getting bigger and bigger. Like, because this whole thing is additive. Xbox Game Pass is additive. One game should not be holding back the other in terms of like, well, I'm just playing Halo now because that's the game I bought. No, you bought Game Pass. So the, then when the next big Xbox Game Studio game comes out, you should also be right there in line waiting to at least try it and giving it a shot and giving it a chance to uh, like really balloon those numbers even further. Uh, so but that's what I expect to happen based on just the success of Forza Horizon. Uh, from, let's see, from Zcrits. Hey, Snacks, man, I realized asking you to choose cats over dogs might have been a little, uh, a little divisive. So this time I'll keep it a little less controversial. Can you rank every Star Wars movie best to worst? <laughs> um, best to worst. So I, the, the best is Empire Strikes Back. Um, I think my second favorite is The Last Jedi. <laughs> Sorry, let me have it. Uh, and then A New Hope, Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, um, and then I think The Phantom Menace. And I, I know people say they like Re Revenge of the Sith. I hate Revenge of the Sith. And I think I hate it, I hate it even more than Attack of the Clones. So Attack of the Clones... Uh, Revenge of the Sith and then um, Rise of Skywalker is just I I watched it once in the theater I really almost walked out um, when they did the whole Palpatine's your daddy thing and then I haven't watched it again I tried to watch it again I couldn't I couldn't even get through it uh, so it is just trash it's so much trash uh, of the other movies um, I like I like Rogue One I don't love Rogue One. I like Rogue One. Um, I definitely could see that they were working through some issues with everything. And I think the movie they ended up with was okay. I just wish that the characters were slightly more memorable. Um, they, they just, the first act, whatever. We don't need to go into it. Um, Solo, I despise. I despise Solo. I like Han Solo a lot. Um, there's there's a couple, there's like th a couple of key questions that you need to answer about like why how Han Solo became Han Solo and none of them have to do with how he got his 
fucking last name got his the stripe on his pants or whatever how he found his coat all that stuff you could show us how he got the millennium falcon fine do that but then tell us why does he tr distrust the force why is he so why is he so skeptical of the force why uh, is he so uh, hostile towards this woman that he obviously is immediately attracted to? Why does he keep her at arm's length and stuff like that? And they like they, they begin to touch on that stuff, but they don't really, that's not what the movie is about. And that's what the movie should have been about. Whatever, I, I could like go on and on about Solo. I don't, listen, if you like it, I get it, it's fine. I overthink it because I like Han Solo so much and I've like read all the Han Solo books and stuff like that. And the books do a really good job of explaining those things of like why he is that way whatever i'm a nerd we don't need to go over it uh what's the other one what's the other uh is there another star wars movie i'm forgetting i can't remember oh well um okay let's keep going i i like uh the the, the clone wars uh the the Jin, gindy tartofsky uh clone wars i watched those while on acid 20 years ago uh, and the scene where he's got the tattoo growing on his arm really messed me up. It's, it doesn't hold up quite as much as I thought it did. But at the time, whoa, mind blowing. Uh, I so I love that. Um, the clone, the new, the, 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 the new, the 3D Clone Wars one is fine. Um, that one I think gets a little bit too self insert. I have, and there's like way too much like filling in to the point where it's like, oh, this is actual to the story. And that feels weird now compared to the movies. And so I, I, I kind of resent it a little bit. I know people really love it. I don't, I don't really like have any ill will towards it. And when I watch it, I tend to enjoy myself. Uh, the Mandalorian, I also thought was like, okay, it's okay. Um, I don't think the story is anything great. Uh, the characters are okay to bad, uh, but man, the, the settings and the backgrounds and the aliens are just the best stuff about Star Wars. The, I, I, I think about the, like, um, the the fishing planet like like the the seattle planet basically is what i refer to it as like the uh uh yeah the, the like the fish market planet all the time i'm like this is there's so much storytelling going on in just the set dressing here uh that's the stuff i love and so the mandalorian can exist just for that stuff and i'm fine uh that is the star of that show to me as far as i'm concerned um and yeah don't do drugs have a good one take care of yourself and goodbye, and don't eat lobsters. Save the lobsters.